Hi, everyone. I am joined by Eric Peterson, also, I guess, known as Planet Peterson. I'm uh, I'm happy to be joined by you here and soon to be the author of a book being released in February of 2024, which has honestly the one of my favorite titles I've heard in a while, uh, <laughs> Rational Answers to Stupid Questions. So, Eric, um, thank you so much for being here, and I'm, I'm excited to chat with you and talk about your new book. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, you know, let's kind of get right into it. Um, you know, what rational answers to stupid questions? A great title. I'm intrigued already. What is this book about? So the book is, to it's structured like a handbook to combat anti-scientific claims. That was my idea for writing the book. I have been talking and debating online for years now with people about science. And eventually, after doing so many hundreds of those conversations, I thought I should just, because I keep hearing the same things over and over again, I should just compile this into a book. And that was the idea for it. And uh, that's that's how it came out. So I I wanted people to be armed with that, to be able to provide that for people because it's hard to respond to a series of talking points, especially when somebody just comes out and says, blank is impossible. Well, Mm -hmm. what if you don't know the reason why what they're saying is false? Now, all of a sudden, it looks like they're right, just because you didn't know what to say. So my book, uh, it arms you with the ability to eviscerate that and uh, not with no, what you think is wrong, you know, not, not by, not with childish school, like a schoolyard. I know you are, but what am I stuff, but with like actual science and evidence. You know, and I think in the age of social media and internet experts, um, it's, it is good to have a, a book that shares the reality of things and backs it up with true scientific data um and you know just even though your book's not released i'm i'm so curious to know without any spoilers like what do you find to be the most relevant topics covered if you could choose it doesn't have to be a set number but the ones that stand out to you that just like simmer in your brain like oh my god i i, I really need to share this so what 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 stands out the most to you sure oh well i would say um evolution it makes up about a third of the book if we if we take out like all the references at the end because that's just you know that I don't consider that really the body of the book that's just like some necessary stuff at the end if you take just the the main body of the text evolution's about a third of it it is by far the most contentious scientific idea uh, that I regularly deal with and so there's a huge number of claims and there's a huge number of arguments and evidences against those claims. So those are sort of the big ones. The, the book is broken into six parts. We have, for example, evolution starts it off. Then there's the Big Bang. The Big Bang is by far the most wildly misunderstood scientific idea. It's not necessarily one that um, people talk that much about, but when they try, man, they really just do not understand it. But I also talk about science in general because people seem to really misunderstand just kind of like philosophically and pragmatically and practically how science is done. People say like, well, this area of study doesn't even count as science. It's like, well, no, you can literally get a degree in this. There are people whose title is scientists who do this kind of thing for a living. So there's a lot to describe and unpack there too like understand exactly what's going wrong with the uh, misunderstanding. And, you know, if people follow you online on TikTok or YouTube or any of your social channels, like they know that you have a certain character to you. You, you know, you have wit, you have, you make people, you, you have a way of engaging with people. And I'm curious, you know, even though your book is comprised of so much scientific fact how much of yourself and your sense of humor did you kind of sprinkle into the 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 hard facts oh yeah the the book is funny something I something I say sort of uh early on in the book is that I take uh the truth seriously I take education very seriously I am a teacher 
But, you know, I don't take myself all that seriously. And I, I think we could all benefit a little bit from that, like not always taking ourselves so incredibly serious. So the book, you can trust all the information in the book. I had actual PhD scientists read, multiple of them read this book and check the information that's in it. And multiple other scientists who work in labs and, and other fields like that have checked it too. So you can trust the information in the book for its accuracy and its authenticity. And I have uh, about 150 citations in the book too. So you, you can check my work if you want to. But, you know, it's not dry. Um, I, being a teacher, I have to try to engage multiple 16-year-olds who, you know, maybe it's not the most exciting thing. And yeah, I, I think I do kind of have a, a, a sense of humor and there, there's some wit and charm and, and humor in the book too. Because um, science is, is important and uh, therefore it should be interesting. And, and it really is interesting. So I want people to get interested and excited about what's in there. And that just comes natural to me because I am passionate and I love this. And that's just kind of my personality. Yeah, and I, I love that too. You know, for me, as an example, you know, I'm someone who has very limited scientific background, like my education. I went to liberal arts school, studied English literature, but I've always been interested in science. And it just, you know, I know through following you and, you know, reading your work, it has a way of engaging all different minds, whether you are have a background in science, whether you have a background in literature or history, whatever the case may be. So um, I think it's great. And I think you being a teacher really offers that connection, you know, connection to people, which is something that is, is a part of your job. And, and you know, with that, you are a teacher and you have this huge following online. And, and I'm just, I'm so curious to know, like, how did both of these worlds kind of come to be? So how did the the planet Peterson kind of emerge out of the classroom? Um, it's it, it's kind of a long story, but it's it's a it's simple. So, you know, I, I can make it pretty short. It basically happened because of the pandemic. So like a lot of people, I was bored. And so I was like, I'll, I'll download the, the TikTok app. That was that was part of it. I also, because my students were going to school online, I started creating educational YouTube videos uh, for them to consume because we couldn't be in the classroom together. So I would say that's kind of how I got my practice with like being an online content creator. And then on TikTok, I just started, uh, you can do live streams and I just started inviting people to come and chat with me. And, you know, at first, you know, I, I just, was nobody on the platform. I was just one of a hundred million users or whatever it is. And then just randomly a couple of videos I would post, ones that were like trying to be funny, others that weren't, would get like hundreds of thousands of views. And then I got a large uh, following. And then I was able to generate content by talking to people online. And people really loved the, people really love to learn. I, I get messages all the time that say like, thank you, I learn a lot from you. But there's also, you know, we have a lot of fun doing it too. We, we, we goof around and there's an entertainment aspect to it. Sometimes you talk to somebody who's just kind of a doofus and it creates these viral moments. But other times, you know, people like to see people combating misinformation. They appreciate that. And there's a, there's a market for that, I guess we could say. Yeah. And it certainly is. And you're, you know, you're very good at it and you have a way of keeping people like, I don't know. It's the combination of both education and uh, entertainment and humor really like really brings people together in a unique way. And and I do know, like as someone, I have a background um, one in a past life. I, I worked in education and I know how demanding that job is. And I'm like, how challenging is it for you to balance? Like, are you is it like what is it like to balance these two different completely well, not completely different, but still different scopes of work. No, it, oh, I mean, they're, they're completely different. Um, being a content creator, it, it's pretty much a part-time job. I would say I probably spend 15 hours a week doing it. And, you know, I, I, I have my regular job too, but I also have an hour commute. So 
I basically Monday through Friday, my work day is 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pretty much like I, I work about an 11 hour day with that with that commute. Um, really, I just uh, I, I schedule things. I plan things. I'm kind of meticulous and methodical with that regard. So that's how I do it. I, I have a routine. I do I do live streams on exactly these days. I always dedicate a certain portion of my morning to like creating stuff and getting it ready. And then there's there are like hours in the evening where I, I set aside for like, I'm just going to do this, bang it out so that we have a routine. I, I, I post content every single day, oftentimes multiple videos every single day. So yeah, it's, um, it's just kind of a, a ruthless routine that I stick to basically. It's, it's not easy though. It is, it is very time consuming, but the rewards have been pretty good for me, I would say. I could imagine into like, it's, you know, you're doing, doing something you're passionate about is always makes it easier, especially when you're, when you're grinding and you're, you're working and you're writing and you're creating, it helps to, uh, it helps to be in a space that you genuinely, you know, care about and invest yourself in. And how did like your, your love of science and, and are now specifically, you are a biology teacher? Well, I teaching science for me has been weird. I am, I, I have multiple science credentials. I can teach every subject and I have taught every subject. I've taught anatomy and physiology. I have taught biology. I have taught earth and space science. I have taught chemistry. I have taught physics. This year, I'm just teaching uh, chemistry. My degree is in biology. And I would say that's what I have the most knowledge in as well as the earth sciences, just because of my like uh, background. Uh, like what I've spent most of my career doing, but um, like in terms of like my passion for science, where did that come from? Um, <laughs> funny enough, I still I still have these. These are a lot of it came from this book right here. So I remember the day that I got this book in Watertown, South Dakota, with my dad. He he bought it for me. I was like kindergarten, first grade, something like that. And it's just the children's book of questions and answers. It's kind of falling apart. So I try to be careful with it, but it's literally just this book. And it's just like hundreds and hundreds of questions. Like, um, where did Montezuma die? There you go. Just random questions in random categories. Uh, why do we get indigestion? So I can vividly remember as a kid, just laying down in the living room, uh, just on my stomach with this book open and just flipping through and reading everything I could about what was going on in there. I just wanted to learn the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And then this book too. I don't remember where this one came from. It is so awful looking. It's in its condition, but again, it's a it's a really old book. And this one is about animals. Um, I don't know when this was published. Yeah from 1964 so this was maybe a book that my grandparents had or something and it's just a book all about animals and it was the same thing I would just lay down and read about them and learn about them so it's kind of the natural world especially the animal world I just threw myself into everything I could I have no idea how many people will have any idea what I'm talking about when I say this but uh, like when I was a kid, I watched the Krat Brothers all the time. Well, they're still making TV shows, I guess, for little kids today, which is kind of crazy. But uh, they started when I was really little. And there are all kinds of like educational programming uh, or programs like that. And that's that's just basically it. That's what piqued my curiosity, I suppose. I love that. And I love that you still uh, you still have the books handy. That's uh, it's the power of books. And, you know, maybe... Who knows? Maybe your book will be that uh that thing that someone's like, man, Eric Peterson's book it got me hooked. All these questions that I've been seeking answers to, you know, it's there. And you know, do you have any visions or aspirations of like the impact or place your book will have in in the world upon its release? Um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, basically, like I said, the, the point of the book is to. Uh, just basically be a handbook to arm people with what the actual evidence for science is. Like, I've never, although I talk to people that don't believe in certain uh, claims made by science, I've never met really anybody that I can think of 
that dislikes science or doesn't think that science is important, right? Um, so for anybody that for anybody that shares that passion and and wants to know like how to defend science in the in the face of people saying, well, you know, we don't like what this type of science has to say or whatever. Um, I, I just want the book to, you know, better educate people so that we don't fall for, you know, dumb talking points and, you know, whatever, whatever else kind of like, you know, agendas that get that get peddled because the consequences, I mean, I, I could talk for a very long time about like the history of this, I won't do that here, but the consequences of uh, a society, especially a really complex society that doesn't understand science at a certain level is catastrophic. It leads to famines and wars and and all kinds of uh, catastrophes. Yeah, no, it's true. And uh, scholars of history could back that up. So there's just a true interconnection amongst like all modalities. And um, your book is super cool. I'm I'm so stoked to read it. And I, you know, I appreciate you coming on here to talk about it and like kind of share just not only the background of the book, but like your own background, because, you know, one of the things that I'm just always personally interested in is seeing like how people came to be and how these stories come to be. So I, I do appreciate it. And I appreciate your time. And before we go, I just want to give you a chance just to share, you know, where people could reach you, the main channels you use, your, your uh, handles, whatever the case may be. Sure. Um, you're pretty much just going to find me on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. I, I don't do very much on Instagram, sorry. But uh, Planet Peterson, I at this point now, if you search those things in, um, I'm pretty much what will pop up. I, I finally do have enough followers where it's not drowned out by the sea of other people named Peterson, which there are a lot of uh, quite famous ones, actually. So good for me, I guess, putting the planet in front of it. Helps. There you go. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, Eric, and your book will be released in February and we'll keep everyone tuned for the exact release date. And I look forward to talking with you. Best of luck in your book release and we will uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Eric.